Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about the Select and Mask workspace. It replaced the Refine Edge tool. I'll show you the Refine Edge tool because it's still there buried away. You need a selection first. Select, Select and Mask, which we're about to go through in a minute. Keep the Shift key pressed, click on it, you get back Refine Edge. Honestly, the Select and Mask workspace is really good and it's just a better view of your selection. This was probably too small to play with in my personal opinion. So I think these workspaces that are coming about with Photoshop now are really good. So let's cancel on that. Let's go Command and Control D to deselect. So with the selection tools, like the marquee tools, you've always got Select and Mask, Lasso tool, Select and Mask. With the Quick Selection and Magic Wand, you've got select subject. Whilst I'm on the quick selection tool, always make sure you've got auto enhance ticked. If you haven't, the tool doesn't behave very well. Why they give you the ability to, to untick it, I don't know. But anyway, it should be on by default in my personal opinion. So select subject is machine learning. It's been developed recently, I think with the 2019 release. So I'm going to use it if it makes my life easier. So select subject. He's thinking about it. He's done a pretty good job. It hasn't picked up the loose stray hairs. I knew it wouldn't, but maybe in the future it will. So for the time being, that's pretty good. So either go select, select a mask, alter option, command control R. So I'm in this view at the moment. I'll go for the views first, because I think it's really important. I'm currently on overlay, and normally that would be colored in red. So Take that green down to zero there. It'll be like that, and I can play around with the opacity, and I can change around what's selected and what's masked. I don't recommend you do that, actually. So you can change it around. It doesn't affect any other tools like the Quick Mask tool, etc. It's just for this workspace. So I'm going to put it back on yellow because the background of this image was pink. So if I put 255 in there, I'm going to get yellow. So I do use that view quite a lot, but let's start from the top with onion skin. The only way I can describe this is it's like an onion skin. You're sort of stripping away layers every time you play with the transparency. So it is pretty good. I do use it, but mainly I use actually overlay. Marching ants, well, it's a selection, simple as that. Overlay, well, we just played around with that. Normally it would be a red, or called, actually called a rubylith overlay. On black, on white, black and white, can be very useful on layers. I've got a solid color adjustment layer in yellow underneath. That's why I'm seeing yellow there. So you can't control the transparency with that one, but you can with things like overlay, uh, on black, on white, and black and white. Left-hand tools, let's put that on a better view, like overlay. Left-hand tools, quick selection tool without auto enhance. It's on by default here. Select subject, which we've been through, because you can come straight here and create your selection, by the way. It's not like the old Refine Edge tool. You, you could come straight to this workspace and start to create the selection yourself. I prefer to start it outside of this workspace. It's entirely up to you. Sample all layers, obviously, it will sample through to that yellow layer, which wouldn't be good. Size, you can control here, plus or minus to add or subtract from the selection. Refine Edge Brush Tool, very important tool. This is what really drives this workspace. When you've got something like this with flyaway hair, and everyone uses these examples for good masking, what the Refine Edge Brush Tool will do, when you start painting around an area like this, you're making the radius wider, because currently, you can see on Marching Ants, that we've got a selection there. If I start painting with that Refine Edge Brush Tool there, I'm saying to Photoshop, re-evaluate that edge. I'm telling you there's hairs there, I want them selected. And it will do its best to select those hairs. So it's, it's a radius tool, you paint round and you'll create this radius. Now I will show it to you in anger in a minute, but that's basically how it works. Brush tool is just like a normal brush tool, you can add or subtract, again, from the selection or mask. It's same for um, Refine Edge. If you make a mistake, you can go to Mindless and basically sort of paint away. You can also hold the Alter Option key, which will change it as well. So if I press that now, Alter Option, you see it's going. Same for the Quick Selection tool, basically, as well. So 
you can see with the ultra option key, it changes around. So the brush tool, as I said, is for painting the mask or painting stuff away. The lasso tool, well, if I went like that, it's always on add straight away, you'll notice up there. If I went to subtract or press the ultra option key, went round it, I can get rid of that just like that. Also, it has a polygonal lasso tool for straight edges, so to speak. Hand tool to move around if you're zoomed in, zoom tool as well. Very straightforward. So it's the refine edge brush tool that I really care about. Now, if you're on the brush tool, you can't show edge. If you're on the refine edge brush tool or the quick selection tool, you can. So show edge. Now that's not showing anything. The reason is we haven't played around with radius here. So let me swirl or twirl them up. Edge detection, once you start putting that on, this is the wrong view to be in here actually, by the way. Let's put it on onion skin. You can see that border. And by me increasing it to three pixels, what I'm saying is go three pixels either side of the original selection. Now this can really help you or hinder you. Now if I put it right up, like so, you can see it's starting to recognize those hairs. If you tick smart radius, notice around these areas here, where it doesn't need to have a wide radius because it's pretty smooth, when you tick smart radius, it will shrink it on the areas of the blouse, but try and keep it as wide as possible, or as wide as 53 pixels on the actual edge up there. It doesn't work really well, this edge detection, but if you're new to the workspace, do experiment with it. But personally, I don't use it as much as I used to because I've learned a few more lessons with this. And what I do is I start painting with the Refine Edge brush tool straight away. Now, I'm not on a very good view here. I'm not a massive fan, um, actually, of the onion skin, so I'm going to go back to overlay. I will change the workspace all the time when you're, I'm playing around. Now, black and white, you can see it's a very hard border. But once we start painting with the Refine Edge brush tool, that will change. So let's go back to a better view. They've got shortcuts, I know, but I can't be bothered to remember them. So let's stay with overlay, which I've changed to yellow. And just take it down a wee bit. Right, Refine Edge brush tool. I don't need to show edge because I'm not going to use edge detection. In fact, I'm going to twirl it up. If you want to use it, by all means use it, but I sometimes think it ruins your selection. That's my personal opinion. It depends on the image totally. So I'm on the Refine Edge brush tool, I'm on Add. I can right click here to make it larger if I want to, or use the square bracket keys, right one to make it larger, left one to make it smaller. So when I start painting in these areas, you can see the yellow starting to appear through. Because what I'm saying to Photoshop is, re-evaluate that area. If I put show edge on now, you can see what I've done. In fact, I made a little mistake there, so I'm gonna get rid of that by pressing the ultra option key, which will put it on to subtract and subtracting that out. So I'm going to paint around this edge now. Do I want every single hair? Probably not. So I'm not gonna make a massive radius. I will use it around here as well, just a little bit. I'm not coming right into that edge. I just want Photoshop to re-evaluate these areas. Here, I know I'm going to get a problem. I have to be really careful. With multicolored hair, Photoshop will see that as an edge. So I'm going to press the Alter Option key and paint that bit away. I don't think I need it there so much. So maybe I might bring it back up there as well. I'm trying to force Photoshop just to think about the very edge. Alter Option to paint that back. So here, I'm gonna paint down quite a bit because it's very difficult area there and I'm very aware of that multicolored bit there because Photoshop will see it as an edge. So again, Alter Option key, I'm clicking away to take it away from certain areas, just like this bit here. Because, you know, it's not it's not part of the edge, some of that hair, so I don't need to select it. So I'm just, I'm just gonna go down here and just do that bit there over the shoulder very carefully. I don't actually want to go right onto that edge. Now, with high quality preview, when you're painting, it will look a lot smoother. That's basically what's happening, but it will slow you down. So I don't recommend, unless you've got a very good system, you turn it on. I've only got 16 gig of RAM, and this computer's nearly five years old now, so 
I don't turn it on because it slows things down. The show original, really, you'll only basically, if you're on Marching Ants and you went show original, you'll see the original, you'll see this new selection now is taking into account that edge. And I'm going to put the opacity right up now to see what's going on. I'm going to turn off show edge. I think that's looking pretty good, actually. I'm quite pleased with that. Set down there, I can still see pink. So I'm going to make it reevaluate. Every time you do this, Photoshop is reevaluating things. So if you go too far, you might ruin your selection. So, but so far, it's not bad. That pink is going to be very difficult to get rid of. Now, there are other tools available to me, and I will come to them in a minute. I just want to point out again, I haven't used edge detection. But if you're new to this workspace, do try it. But personally, I don't use it much anymore. Global refinements. Well, smooth. If you mouse over it, it will tell you. The smooth, jagged edges. It makes the mask a lot smoother. Feather will soften the selection edge. Contrast. Well, if I put it on black and white and zoom in. Now, notice how good that mask is now. Zoom in to that area there, let's say. And put the contrast up to 100. You can see it's ruined the mask but a small amount can really help you along. Shift edge, if you mouse over, it will literally mean you're contracting or expanding the selection range. Sometimes I do put a small amount on. I'm gonna start from the top here actually, I'm gonna put a small amount of smoothness on. You can go into the box and use the up and down arrow keys. I like to be zoomed in when I'm doing this, I really do because I'm looking for gumminess and I think for I'm getting a lot of gumminess there, and I don't want that. So I'll probably take it down to two. I don't want it too smooth, maybe even one. Feather, I do like a small amount, but very small amount. That's why I'm zoomed in. I'm looking all the time to see what's happening to that mask. 0.4 pixels, that's all I'm going to have. Contrast, you know, ironically, as I said, sometimes it can ruin your mask, Sometimes it can make it better. So I'm looking very carefully as I do this because it'll make it a bit more punchy in these areas here. So I've gone for 6%. Now, shift edge could work in my favor if I take it up. Now, if I take it up to something ridiculous like 40, let's see what it's doing. Now, let's have a look at that on overlay, let's say. So it's on 41. If I bring it back down to 7, actually, it's doing a pretty reasonable job. So I might keep it around 20, ironically. So I've expanded the range, so to speak. Right, you can clear the selection, obviously, or invert it as well. So that's that covered. Let's twirl that up. Output settings. Now, if I had a lot of pink there, I can try and get rid of that pink by using decontaminate colors. I actually think it's ruining this image, but it's trying to get rid of that pink. So it knows that that pink shouldn't be there at 100% it's doing its best to get rid of it. Now maybe 40 might be okay, maybe 20. So around 20, I think it's working 14. It's helping along. I probably would say here, to be totally honest with you, I'm never going to get totally rid of that pink. It's too tied in with the hair, if you see what I mean. So Photoshop can't do it here. Now, outside of this workspace, there are plenty of ways of playing with masks. You can use the brush tool, the dodge and burn tools, the smudge tool, the blur tool, etc., etc. I will show you one or two tricks when we get out of here in a minute. So I'm going to stick with decontaminate colors around, I reckon, 13% or do. Now, when you use decontaminate colors, your choices shrink. You can't have a selection. You can't have a layer mask. You can have a new layer, new layer with layer mask, which I'm going for, new document or new document with layer mask. So I can remember the settings. I can reset down here completely. You can't press the alter option key like you can with some tools. You just have to tick this to reset the workspace. This is is not a parametric change, you can't come back. So once you've created your mask, you've created it. But you can actually be on the mask itself, the layer mask, and bring up select the mask again if you need to, to go back and have the same selection to work with, so to speak. But personally, I find that ruins your selections. But some people do do that. So when you get the layer mask, which I'm going to do now, by going okay and accepting this, they will load up 
the selector mask workspace from that mask. So it will be a new selector mask workspace, so to speak. I don't recommend doing it. Sometimes it can work, but personally, I find it ruins my mask. So that's my mask. Let's take it to command one, which is actually actual size. It's not perfect. You can see that pink there. I don't think I would ever cure it inside that selector mask workspace. But there's little things that are open to you, like the brush tool here, be on your keyboard. In overlay, which is one of the contrast modes, 50% gray will not be affected. But if you paint with white, pure white, D on my keyboard for default colors, and let's say I'm gonna risk opacity of 100 and flow of 100, notice what happens, Alt or Option click on the mask. If I zoom in a bit more, Command or Control plus, or equals. If I paint now, notice what happens. It brightens up those edges. Don't go too far in though. I've made a mistake there. So Command Z, what I could do now is probably, I should put the flow down to something like 50, which is Shift 5, and paint around there. You can see what I'm doing. I've probably gone in a bit too far, but if I look at the mask, Command and Control Z, you can see what I've done. I've actually slightly ruined it, but sometimes it can make it a lot better. It will pick out those the white of the mask much better. So I could show you now with that on, I'm actually bringing the color back into the background. So Command and Control Z. But those tools are definitely open to you, as are things like the blur tool, the smudge tool, the dodge and burn tools. You know, all these tools are open to you. Any painting tool can work inside a mask. So. My next video will be about those little tricks you can use to make your mask better. I knew that the selector mask workspace would never work there. The pink is so tied up with the actual hair, the pink background, that to remove it would be difficult. But there are ways of removing it, but I'll make this video go on for far too long. So my next video will cover that subject. So that's it, guys. Selector mask is a really good workspace. Remember, you don't have to use that edge facility keyboard shortcut, alter option, command control R. You don't have to use that edge detection if you don't want to. If you tick it on, show radius like so, put show edge, you can see the edge. Obviously, it's not going to work on this because I've done so much work on it. But basically, try that first. If it's working for you, by all means, use it. And smart radius, if you've got a smooth edge, it knows it's smooth and makes the radius narrower on that edge because it doesn't need to be as wide. That's it, guys. Thanks very much.